Welcome to Photo Finds. I'm your host Kevin, and this week we are getting started in Disney's Hollywood Studios. We are at the Muppets queue, and can you see what's new? It's this section right here. We're going to have another look at it from another angle. Uh, this is a completely new prop that was put in somewhat recently into the Muppet Vision queue. And uh, we'll take a closer look on what's written on the side. You see it's addressed to Miss Piggy. This is the, uh, the frame at the top that makes it look like a, you know, a wardrobe with all those lights and so forth. And you'll see um, some further, this one with the flash, some further uh, addresses um, put onto that trunk. This is what you see behind the device, which is quite a lot of, um, of uh, power cables. And leads me to suspect this is not just about, um, you know, what, whatever the, uh, the lights can give you, make it look like a makeup station. Uh, but rather that there might be a mirror in there. Uh, that's meant to hide a one-way mirror kind of interactive prop. Now, no one said anything about what this is, but um, it seems unlikely that they would have added something into this prop, um, into this area, unless it was meant to be interactive and something up and coming. So this is the bottom part of the prop where you see it's uh, addressed to Walter the Whistler uh, from the, the Muppet movie, the more recent Muppet movie. Elsewhere in DHS, we are at the loading docks out by the um, Backlot Express um, and the uh, tram tour e exit. Uh, and uh, here they've rethemed some of these crates, uh, which always had like movie names. You can see a little bit of them stuck underneath here under where it says lights now, uh, because this is an area that is used for um, meeting Goofy during the Halloween holiday season. We're switching parks now to SeaWorld. And as you can see, they've switched um, maps. Uh, this one has kind of an orange glow to it in celebration of the brews, the band's brew and barbecue celebration. You can see this as well in some of the signage around the park. The bands give rise to the pick-shaped sign. Uh, and they've just kind of got this different vibe in the uh, this corner of the park. Uh, Harley Davidson set up over there and... Um, a different color theme to all of the kiosks and stands that they otherwise put up. And of course they're here to sell you beer. The brew sampler is 20, um, 25 different brands and you can get 10 of them uh, for $21. It's about 70 ounces so it's somewhere between 4 and 5 12 ounce beer equivalent for $21. Uh, not a bad price. And they're all craft beers of course so um, of various kinds. It was pretty heavy on the ale we found um, and there were lots of different kinds of ale around, not so much in the lagers or the, or the stouts. Now, of course, there's also a lot of barbecue from local brands, and you'll see a couple of them scattered throughout uh, this area, some line dancing as well here. Um, and there's the SeaWorld one, which has its own brand of barbecue here for sale, uh, as well as Tony Roma's and uh, uh, other uh, local bands, or local... Um, there were local bands playing too, but local restaurants is what I meant to say there. So these are some of those same kiosks they use to uh, sell things in the holiday season. Also here repurposed and repainted for the um, bands and brew and barbecue um, celebration. Now the pavilion, the sort of corporate pavilion up in the side here is used for a kid area as well as uh, further seating. And then some animal encounters. This is a, a frogmouth bird. It looks a little bit like an owl, but it's not. Uh, and in fact, it's quite small, maybe football sized. And then you can see possums and gators. Lots of different animals for you to go visit when you're there at the animal encounters. Bald eagle came out as well, though of course you can't touch the bald eagle. And then they have uh, name brand bands um, that are scheduled to perform here. So you've got Beach Boys coming next week, for instance. Sheryl Crow is coming at one point as well. And sometimes there's country mixed in as well. Now, as you can tell, we've switched parks again. We're at Universal Studios Florida, where the Transformers building has gotten some uh, decorations on one side, kind of a barcode down here and the nest um, name and insignia up at the top there. Uh, and I just have not been to this part of the building before. For all I know, this bumblebee decoration has been here from the very beginning when the wall went up. I just haven't seen it before. I've only seen these posters over to the side. So this is uh, a very large and oversized poster, something you can go stand next to and take your picture with. Now it is Mardi Gras season at Universal Studios Florida. So as you can see, it's February 9th through April 20th, on mostly on Saturday, Saturday nights, uh, where they not only bring out the extra merchandise, uh, but just decorate the place and let you have uh, a free concert. So just like we saw with SeaWorld, there are name brands here uh, as well. 
There's a closer look at some of them. Cool in the Gang, Pat Benatar, uh, Lifehouse was the opening act for the first week. There's some of that decorations throughout the area and the land, as well as some special food. Um, so they had uh, twisted taters over in the, around the side, and they had a, over to the right jambalaya from there. And you'll even find some people um, strolling around selling you jello shots uh, for several dollars each. Now the highlight, of course, is the Mardi Gras parade, where everyday visitors are drafted to throw beads out to the crowd. Although the reality is, I think this is something that uh, most people sign up for ahead of time, like uh, if they're annual pass holders. And even then, they have to win some kind of lottery, basically, to get the privilege to throw from the, the floats. So there were several floats new this year, although I don't have a complete set of them for you to show you today. We're making a stop over at Downtown Disney. Uh, this truck has caught my eye. Now, the truck has been out in various forms since at least mid-December. Uh, in various locations. Pleasure Island was one reported location for it. I've seen it out in the parking lot before too. Uh, but now here it is in front of Splitsville and uh, when it's open it's either running Disney cartoons or we saw the Duffy story is one of the things they were running up here. And just kind of basic plush uh, figures for sale. So a little bit perplexing that they felt the need to have yet another merchandise location but uh, whatever works for them. Now out in front of Splitsville itself is this podium which is somewhat new. It's kind of an info board podium. You don't do any actual reservations there, but you can see uh, the restaurant menu up front or find out what's involved with the bowling uh, from this person out front without clogging up the area inside. Now the Splitsville Bowling Alley has um, always had automatic pin setters uh, and this window has always been here. This is next to one of the um, kind of show uh, windows where you can see into the building. But until recently they had kind of a black uh, velvet curtain up and you couldn't see the pin setter. But now they've taken that away and you can see the pin setter uh, and it's a kind of fascinating machine to watch it humming and vibrating all the time. A little bit of construction going on to Something Silver next to the AMC. And the, sh the store is still open during the construction. And in downtown Disney, uh, this caught my eye, a couple of new machines in the first floor area. Uh, these are Temple Run stand-up machines, um, and I had seen them first at IAPA, so not too surprised to see them finally make their way into the parks. Over at D Street, this has been around for several months. I just don't think I've taken any photographs of it. Apologies if I have. It's kind of a conveyor belt of um, broken and other animation, vinylmation figures. Um, some of them uh, reconstituted as different things. Now this is new out in front of Planet Hollywood, as you can see in the background here, and AMC over to the right from there. Uh, this is a kiosk for the Disney um, Visa card. So it may have been moved from somewhere else, but the paint certainly is on, on it is new, and its location out here in this walkway is definitely new. A quick glance at the Rainforest Cafe, where the reconstruction of the volcano is going along very well. They've got the sign um, scaffolding up. The sign itself is not there yet. And I'm taking a detour here into World of Disney to show you something I discovered on this most recent trip. I'm sure by this point you're seeing it as well. Uh, there's a representation of the Twin Towers still in um, a location in Disney World. So it's been 10 years now, more than 10 years. I'm not entirely certain they're going to go out of their way to repaint that. And um, maybe at this point it's something of a tribute, but uh, that caught my eye. As did this ceiling, which is in the uh, section for um, men clothing. I've never really looked up here before, um, and it, it occurs to me that this is something, a mural um, with quite a lot of detail and really reveals why uh, those of us who are deep into Disney are, are that way, uh, because this level of attention to detail. I mean, you've got birds. This is a bird mural, although you've also got some animals from Cinderella here, some mice, from things like Dumbo or from things like the Jungle Book, and then elsewhere from uh, Silly Symphonies, the Ant and the Grasshopper, let's say, or... Um, Iago and Zazu were around, and, and these guys might be from Black Cauldron, or maybe the Sword and the Sorcerer, uh, Sword and Stone. So you know, it's it's really a lot um, packed into one ceiling space that was interesting and revealing, and I could have stayed there for a long time. While I'm here, I'm going to show you a few of the T-shirts which caught my eye: Darkwing Duck and um, the Gummy Bears. So perhaps there's some kind of Disney Afternoon um, revival going on here as well as uh, Roger Rabbit stuff. So it really is kind of a revival of the late 80s, at least when it comes to the merchandise. Maybe this is what sells these days. And speaking of what sells, I have a new product to let you know about. This is a 62-page book. Um, I've been putting these out since 2010. 
Uh, this year I found a way to make it um, uh, much more affordable, however. And this is a, a, a taste of what you'll find inside. Um, it's 62 pages, a little bit like this, moving its way through the year, letting you know what's been added or what's been removed and providing photos of everything involved. Uh, this is a particularly dear page to me. It's um, photos of the original Habit Heroes from 2012, early 2012, and uh, that didn't last long, maybe a week or so. So these are all photos you cannot get anywhere else, uh, but there's a bunch of them there. And Obviously we have things like Test Track because that was uh, removed, and then things like Snow White because that was removed, and things like Little Mermaid because that was added in 2012. There really was a lot added in 2012, uh, including some new castle projections and so on. So uh, if you get a chance to have a, a look for this, you can find it on Amazon. Um, there's uh, not a Kindle version, just a print version, and it costs, as, as you see here on the screen, $9.99. Um, and I've left up here a reference to one of my other books, the Walt Disney World Hidden History book, uh, which is, uh, I guess, one of our best sellers. Not the new book, though. The yearbook is the new one for, uh, for this week, and you'll see me make mention of it uh, from time to time going forward. Thanks as always for your attention, and we will catch you next time.